So, hi everyone, welcome to uh, Make or Repair. Today I'm in the workshop instead of the lab, and I'm going to be looking at a repair on a power tool. So, this is actually a repair for a friend, uh, and this is a big Ryobi belt sander with a frame and everything like that. Um, so, I do know what's wrong with this which is that during use it has unfortunately caught the dust extractor cable which has run into uh, let's see if I can zoom in a bit so I apologise for any video and audio quality things this is the uh, metalwork and woodworking area and there isn't proper camera and lighting and all that sort of stuff in here so yeah, so the cable has gone into this uh, gap, very small gap. It's been drawn in by the sandpaper on the belt. And uh, yeah, just wrapped into there and completely jammed. So obviously that doesn't turn anymore. So um, belt sanders. Oh, let's just release that. Yep, so that's come in. So belt sanders essentially have two wheels and they you run a belt between them. I do not have a belt for this. So, but the sandpaper essentially goes across here, across this plate, which is lightly sprung and very polished and round this wheel and back again. So there's a couple of important things for this. The first is that the wheels should track properly. So there will be a tracking adjustment on one of these wheels so that uh, because if they don't track properly, then what will happen is when we put any pressure on the sandpaper, the sandpaper will just work its way off the side. So there'll be a tracking adjustment for that. And these two wheels will be set back slightly below the um, plane of this guy here, uh, of the plate. So the sandpaper will come off there and off, the, off this plate um, and then onto these wheels and it's actually only the plate part that does the sanding Now this is, could be a bit of a saviour for us because we don't know whether for example the hub on this back wheel uh, and this is the drive wheel we don't know whether the hub on that wheel has actually been bent and twisted and of course we don't know where that goes back into its bearing on the frame we don't know that could even be cracked or it could be distorted um, so uh, we'll have to see if this wheel even runs true enough for this to be rescued. Anyway, the first job, which my friend had a go at uh, and didn't succeed at, is to try and remove this wheel so we can actually get the cable out. Because until we do that, we can't even see whether or not the motor still runs. Obviously, this has tripped out. Whether it's taken out the electronic speed control, whether it's taken out just the fuse in the plug, whether I can just plug it in and it'll run fine, who knows. So, first things first, let's have a little look and see what we've got. So I'm pretty much going to turn on the camera and let it run while I do some work on this and uh, hopefully we'll see some interesting stuff. Now, my friend has already taken a couple of screws out and he's still them on. So, uh, let's have a look what's going on there. Okay, so I think that is out of this plastic casing just here. He's attempted to just release the pressure on the plastic casing, which absolutely makes sense. Okay, so first up, let's just have a look at getting a feel for these and see if I can just take out one of the cores or something so that it will uh, have a bit more movement. And clearly the answer to that is going to be not a chance. Okay. Next up then, what's that nut? Do we reckon 15? Yep, there's 17 on that nut. Oh yeah, it comes off easy enough. I don't think this is going to do anything useful, but... Hmm. What's best? I mean, we could try and take this section out, but I don't see a lot of space for movement with that. Perhaps we can see if we can take out all this casing. The seams back here be a bit of metal though so even if take the casing off might not get very far but uh, you know we've got to start somewhere so 
So I'm just, un I don't have a service manual for this, so I'm just kind of unscrewing everything I can find and hoping for the best, really. That is all the screws out of that side. Is it going to part at all now? Oh, he's heck. Oh, okay, we've got screws going up on the other side as well, but that must be to fasten, surely that's to fasten that piece of plastic to that piece of metal, you would think. Surely they're not going through the metal and fastening into the piece of plastic, that sounds a bit weird. So this would appear to be a belt guard. So you've got the motor in the middle, driving a belt back to this thing here, so yeah, that might actually give us quite useful access, we'll see. Move that screw out of the way before I get confused, because that doesn't belong to it. They've got three different sizes of screw and type of screw so far. Okay, so yeah, okay, there we go. There's the belt drive, so this is a cogged belt. There's a bit of uh, sandpaper found its way up inside there. This is the drive. And this must be the mount for the actual, because just here, has round about there where my finger is, must be the uh, hub of that wheel just running through. This must be geared onto it. So in order to get at that, I would have to take this pulley off. Really see how it's even fastened on at the moment. Let's continue trying to get into the uh, case. Okay, um, we'll take the little brushes out as well. There's some screws well buried down there. So I'm just having a look at this back section, thinking that should part company, but. Uh, doesn't want to. Oh, hang on. So I can see now that there's actually a screw down here. I think he's attaching a frame onto this piece of plastic. So uh, yeah, I'm going to take this out. Let's see what that gets me. Oh, I thought I was going to take that out. This is just the springy thing. Let's take it off. See if it gives me any access. chance to actually I don't think this unevenness on the cork is a problem because it goes into these little uh, slots Let's put that there with its screws you can see the adjustment point on this front roller which is just this uh, little thing in there so you can that means you can adjust that backwards and forwards this would appear to be the screw that holds. This is the tensioning mechanism. So as I pull that back, you can see the... That's all spring-loaded, of course. Just move it over this side a bit, just so things a bit more central for you. Just popping these two screws out in here. I don't really... Uh, I'm just trying to get access. And... Uh, Access is proving to be a bit of a problem, it has to be said. Okay. So now we've got quite a bit more access. You can actually see there's not that much in there. So this is just a spring tensioner onto this bracket here. There's a pin in the middle. Here's our piece of sandpaper. And... Uh, there's a little belt uh, restraining thing at the back there. Here's some shredded sandpaper. Has that given me more access though? Yeah, so it's got to be no. What's holding? So 
I don't know if it's visible on here, but there are two screws here. So there's the metal plate that comes here. But that seems to... Ah, uh, yeah, okay, that's what these screw holes are for. In here. Let's see if I can get in there and cut that paper out of the way. It's got really, really high quality sanding sheet, I think. Maybe not high quality, but really, really tough. Okay, so I think I'm there. So we can get in through this bottom plate, and now we've taken the spring off. That gives us access, I hope, to remove the metal frame from that holds this circular thing from the casing. At least that's what I think it does. And of course I dropped that screw. Come out, thank you. Let's see if this casing will move at all now. Oh, still nothing. I mean, I realise obviously that it's constrained by the grip that's happening in this section just here, but uh, oh, I thought I would see some movement. I wonder if I can get a gear puller on the back of this. Okay, so gear pulling equipment and stuff. Not really designed for this particular job, but uh, let's see if I can jerry rig something. Chances of this being successful are very slim. Not enough yet, but uh, let's have a look. I need something that will go down that hole. So it's actually progressed off about an inch so far. We get something that'll go down that hole and act as a sort of fulcrum for this to press on. But the, uh, the thread on this is now too big to go in. So uh, yeah, I just need a bit of metal that'll fit. So just an inch piece of brass. Okay. Okay, cool. That should work now, hopefully. So this is just literally extracting the core, the actual wheel itself, and the, uh, I think it'll come out now. Hurrah! So you can see where the bearing sits, and that's all okay. No cracks in that. Just a casting point on there. That should now come out. This, if we're lucky... Wow, look at the state of that. And it's gone in a long, long way. So pro tip when you're doing this, rotate this anti-clockwise so you hear it click and feel it just move in and then you can fasten it up so you're just using your fingers to hold it flat rotate your anti-clockwise it clicks that's the screws in, that's the threads engaging then you can screw it up and you don't have any faffing to do Excellent, absolutely cool. Let's have a look at the state of this guy. Well, he's a bit mangled, particularly around this piece here. But truthfully, 
I think as a drive mechanism there is sufficient left. Now we've got the obstruction out of the way. I guess it would almost certainly be possible to just buy a new one of these as a unit. Quick opportunity to get some dust out of it. Okay, so reassembly, uh, fingers crossed, will be pretty much the opposite of assembly. Let's just get a small brush out just so we can get some dust out of the inner workings while we're here. Clean up the front edge of these bearings and things like that. Remove any debris, which I think we've pretty much got all of it now. Reassemble. So yeah, this uh, is a little bit chewed, but uh, it'll be easy enough now to get a new one and just replace it if it needs it. We're very lucky, I think, that this uh, doesn't appear to be uh, distorted uh, in any particular manner. Um, despite the enormous force that must have been present on it. Um, again, I'm just to finish fastening it up. So obviously, if this is too badly damaged, you can just chisel that off and stick a new piece of cork onto it. But uh, yeah, it's in good enough condition, I think. Now, I don't have any belts to uh, test this with, so I can't set it up, unfortunately. But uh, there we go, that's all done. Everything's running nicely, that's moving. Let's take a quick look at the uh, actual wheel running. Okay, so we can feel just a little bit of uh, indent just here as it goes round. This outer edge isn't damaged at all, but uh, yeah, worst case is that you have to just buy a new one of those uh, and stick it on, but uh, uh, that's an easily replaceable part now that all the obstruction is removed. Um, okay, anyway. Uh, I think this is ready to go back. bit more work with the stiff brush so it goes back tidier than when it arrived and one of my custom cleaning cloths otherwise known as a sock so these are just old socks that I've got a bit well I don't like them anymore they cease to have the right type of elastic etc I'm not going to do a perfect job on this but just get the loose material off it, it's nice to do that, I think. So anyway, we ended up taking that apart a bit more than it needed to be, but uh, to be honest, I didn't really expect a gear pull to work. Anyway, it did. Ladies and gentlemen, I give you one repaired, skilled Ryobi EABS 1310B. Um, yeah, so one belt sander. Back from the grave. Oh, I'm not cleaning the box out as well. Ugh. What? Kind of assume it goes in like that. <laughs> I have mentioned that this is a huge box for what's in it. I, also, I know it's got a frame in here, but um, yeah, I kind of 
it's about four inches longer than it needs to be and about even with the frame it's probably three inches deeper this way than it needs to be and uh, I mean I suppose you can store a lot of belts in the box with it and things if you wanted to good job done so that's about it um, I'll add a link for this uh, set of uh, bearing pullers and uh, gear puller type stuff. Um, I don't want to spend a lot of money on this, I don't use them a lot, but uh, just having one around can be pretty useful from time to time. Anyway, um, ended up taking that apart a bit more than it needed, but uh, it gave us a good view inside. I uh, hope you enjoyed that. If you did, please give it a thumbs up. Of course, subscribe, leave some comments as usual, and I'll see you next time. Take care. Bye for now.